Howdy, it's Tubal Cain once again. You know, back when I was in my prime, and that's not very recent, I used to teach uh, high school metals and machine shop, but we had a class that was called General Metals. And in that class, we did a lot of different hand operations, and we did cutting and bending and threading and soldering and fastening and foundry and forging and heat treating and uh, uh, other operations as well and you know these are becoming lost arts and, and maybe that's good I don't know but I still enjoy these uh, uh, tools and uh, these methods of doing things and in this video I wanted to cover uh, sheet metal snips and shears and the different kinds and how to use them and here's just a few Oh, perhaps one-third of my uh, snips, because I have a lot of repeats as well, duplicates. But uh, some of these you're going to find that are common, and uh, that uh, you have them around your shop. But you might see others here that you have never laid your eyes on before. And I don't think uh, that some of these odd ones are manufactured anymore. So you have to find them uh, at sales, and they're, but there's still an awful lot of them around. Names like Wiss and Pexto were magic in those days. Here's just a few others. I've got them laying down on the floor. I ran out of bench space. But these are more modern and you're going to recognize most of these. Let me mention first that uh, there are different size snips and uh, you're going to use uh, the large ones for thicker metal and the smaller ones for the light gauges. And the gauge of sheet metal can be uh, measured using uh, this type of gauge and there's just little slots in here that, and you uh, put the metal in there make sure there's no burrs on there until you find uh, the groove that just fairly fits barely fits now on galvanized metal such as this sometimes you have to allow for the coating because it was the gauge before they uh, they galvanized it so uh, this fits into the very uh, smallest slot just barely that's uh, 30 gauge and make sure that you use a gauge. There are many different kinds here. I, pu I put an X on this so I grabbed the right one. United States Standard. And now that's for sheet and plate made of iron and steel. This is not to be used on non-ferrous metals such as copper, aluminum, brass, and so on. Ferrous, of course, means that it contains iron. Get yourself one of these. And on the back side it tells how many thousandths of, of an inch each one of the gauges is. These are fairly expensive if you buy a, a, a Sterrett, a brand new. Uh, why don't you get yourself one off of eBay? You know, cutting metal again is kind of like uh, uh, prying or uh, you need to leverage and the longer the shears the more leverage you have and notice that on this real long one here the length of the blades is, is not all that great because with long handles and working into the throat way down here of a snips you have a lot of leverage remember what Atlas said give me a lever that is large enough and a fulcrum and I can move the world so we got these from the small sizes up to the larger. And even this will be dwarfed by the one I'm going to show you now. This uh, bench snips is 30 inches long, made by Pexto. And the blades alone are uh, 8 inches. So you can really get some leverage uh, with this. And this was, was designed to be used uh, on a sheet metal uh, worker's bench with this uh, part of it in the steak, uh, steak plate. If you know what a steak plate is, that was used in uh, sheet metal shops and they would mount uh, the different the tools on there, the different stakes and sometimes uh, rotary machines could be held in uh, the pockets on uh, a steak plate. And I used to have one here last year but I got rid of it. So it would be used like this this would go down into the bench and you could use two hands up here to do your cutting and you had a lot of leverage if this was sharp 
Remember, these were made in the days before there were uh, electric shears, and and uh, in the smaller shops they wouldn't have had the money to buy a a foot shear. So that's uh, that's a bench shear, a 30 inch bench shear, and really it's a wall hanger. You won't see anyone using one of those. I was always fascinated by these snips, uh, and I have them in two different sizes. They were made by the uh, Bartlett Company, probably long out of business, I would think. And uh, this is called a compound lever. So there was an extra lever here that gave you uh, more, uh, more leverage, so you could cut that thick metal. Also, visualize yourself 70 years ago cutting all day long with something by hand and uh, how your hands would ache and hurt and of course you would get a carpal tunnel but they didn't know what it was so they just uh, fired you. And here's the bigger one. These probably were expensive because there's extra parts. Compound lever. Pretty nifty, huh? I had a whole roll of this galvanized out in the garage and uh, look at how irregular the cut is on there and I didn't make that that's the way I bought it it was used like everything else I've got but uh, you know somebody didn't have a good snips and uh, or a straight edge and they just cut it at uh, random and it's just as sharp as can be and boy uh, you got to be careful with this because you get burrs and how easily you can uh, cut yourself. I know the light is reflecting off of the zinc coating here but uh, I just put a, a, a scribe line on here and it's always easier when you're cutting a, a short piece off than it is right down the middle. But using your snips, remember you cut right on the line. You're not uh, allowing for any kerf with a straight snip. So cut right on the line and work down into the throat of the snips. That's where you got your leverage, although this is a very light soft metal. and so on and the metal will curl off the bottom. That's with the straight snips. This snips is aptly named. It's a curve snips. They also came in many sizes. Here's a real small one. It's also curved. That would be good for aluminum, copper, and uh, art metal I suppose or used by an artist where we're doing real small work. I never have used this. It's nice little snips. So I've laid out a curve here. Might not show up. And we'll put this curve snips to use. I'm going to start. This one has a quite a quite a bit of a curve on it. I've seen some that uh, do not curve quite that much. And this one is not very sharp. It looks like somebody sharpened this that didn't know what they were doing. Did I mention to never cut wire, nails, or any round stock with the tin snips? And I sure have seen a lot of people do it. And you'd you'd uh, catch the kids at school even attempting to cut off a padlock using something like this. So they were committing a double sin there. They were uh, going to steal somebody else's goods and they were damaging the shears. Oh, the stories I could tell. And here's the curve snips. Now a real large radius uh, can be cut pretty easily with a straight snips too, but as you get into uh, the tighter curves the curve snip becomes a little more useful. Take a little bit longer stroke. I do tend uh, when I'm using a snips uh, to work more up into the throat and I'm taking uh, shorter cuts which leaves the, the cut a little rougher. But this works real nice. I do not think the line is showing up on uh, the video. This is called a duck bill. A little bit different than, than a, a regular straight snips. And you can cut irregular shapes and even straight with this 
and uh, there's not quite as much interference here because of the uh, thin jaws on it. Duckbill, one that I really don't use. I have never used this snips. Not sure it, what its exact purpose is other than it's made by Wiss and it's called a scroll pivoter. A neat looking shears. And it reminds me a bit of the shears that they use to cut bands, steel bands off of a, uh, goods that have been shipped. The geometry of the uh, uh, jaws. This is a Pexto double cutting shear. Rather unique. And the idea here is that you can cut uh, through uh, ducting or something else on a furnace without worrying about one of the pieces having to peel off. Now the principle here is that it cuts a, a strip of metal out, double cutting. But this one is so dull, I, that's all the farther I can get it to shear. Actually it's not so dull as uh, some moron attempted to sharpen it incorrectly. And that ruined it. And it probably was the same moron that pounded on it with a hammer until it broke and then someone welded it long ago. But another unique thing about this, they were self-starting. So if you're going to uh, get into the plenum of a furnace, let's say, the end here is sharpened so you would literally uh, poke it until you pierce the metal and then you, you could get started. Also it had a crimper here so obviously this was used by furnace men and you could do a little bit of crimping here with uh, that's kinda neat and notice that the metal is starting to curve as I'm as I'm doing that. So that's uh, really a neat snip. It's too bad that it's just a wall hanger and is not usable anymore. Double cutting. This is a hawkbill snips made by Pexto. You know, the, Pexto really had a complete line of, uh, of snips and sheet metal tools for that matter and this was owned by a man whose initials were JD who's probably been dead for 70 years already. And this is why they call it a hawk bell. And that's perfect to cut circles. And it can be used either way. It can be used from the bottom as well. Large and small circles out of sheet metal. Did I mention not to cut wire with these? Now let's cut a circle with that hawk bell snips. You need a hole there to get started with. I laid out about a three inch hole with uh, dividers. There's the center. I just took a, a maple block and a chisel and uh, made a hole in there. It's a triangular shape, but you can drill a hole, but it doesn't matter how you make the hole, but get a hole in there so you can get the, the snips started. And my preferred method is to rough cut uh, the hole to start with, staying uh, a little bit away from the line, perhaps a quarter inch or half inch, all the way around. And then it's so much easier to manipulate everything uh, to make your final cut, which will be right on the line. Now you can see I've got it rough cut out, and now I'm cutting uh, right on the line. And you can cut from the top or the bottom. I like to take my time so I get a, a nice hole, don't have to do a, lot, a whole lot of filing, but you're going to have some rough spots when you make tight curves. And, and some jagged edges. I think there's just a little more control when you can uh, when you come up uh, through the bottom of your hole like this. And you can get right on the line. And so on. Of course I'm not going to do the whole thing because it'll take too long. Fairly smooth but it would need a little filing. Be careful you don't cut yourself. Wear those Kevlar gloves. During the Second World War, as you know, we made a lot of airplanes in this country, 
and a goodly number of the workers uh, were uh, women. And they developed the aviation or aircraft snips, uh, I think, at that time. I'm not positive on that, but uh, they make these in many different styles, and there's, there's a compound action here also, so uh, that it, it wouldn't tire your hands so much uh, doing that uh, for a full day, and uh, maybe a woman with not quite as much strength in her hands, although I've seen some pretty strong ones. And they made these, or do make them, in uh, straight snips, and then there's a right and a left. They make a double cutting also. I do not have one to show you. And here's another type of aviation snips. I, I guess it is. I've had it for years. I never have used it. Do not know the exact purpose. And I haven't even looked at it in 10 years. But there it is. And I don't even see a, a name on this. A brand name. But those are aviation or aircraft snips. Particularly handy in uh, furnace work as well.